Captain Ball for the locker room. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Try to reach 1,500 subscribers for the end of the month. And let's get into it. So the Vancouver Canucks beat the Carolina Hurricanes 4-3. Shows how frustrating it is to kind of get a pulse on this team. And the reason why I say it's frustrating is that they show moments of being an extremely good team. You play the Hurricanes, who are number two in the NHL overall. Take them to a shootout. You won with a Peterson winner. And then you just you bite the bullet everywhere else. They'll play some mediocre teams and just shit the bed it's just very frustrating to watch as a hockey fan to get a grasp on what exactly is the vancouver canucks there has been rumors about bruce Boudreaux's replacement already be on the staff with rick talkett elliot freeman has kind of reported on this let's just do a quick breakdown on this canucks team first two lines you have great scoring standouts for me are bull horvat jt miller Pedersen, kuzmenko those are the four guys up front that i feel have had standout seasons defense Quinn Hughes, Luke Shen for his cap that has done well. Ethan Beer has been respectable in the time he's played, but let's just be very blunt here. Tyler Myers at six mil for that production at 10 points in 40 games is not enough. Edwin Larson at 7.26 mil for what he's giving you is awful. In my opinion, he is a 750K to a $1 million defenseman and he's just, he's washed. He's only 31 years old but he's playing like he's 45. He's just not the same guy he was in his prime. And then when it gets to the goaltending, you have Thatcher Demko, who is currently on IR. 15 games played, a 3.93 goals against average, an 8.83 save percentage, and a 3 10 record. That's the outlier here. Thatcher Demko is an extremely good goalie, especially when healthy. And you can't just blame it on Thatcher Demko because, quite frankly, every other goalie has a sub 900 save percentage. Just as an explanation, Spencer Martin, in 24 games played, has a 3.76 goals against average and 881 save percentage and 11 10 record. And then Colin Delia, in seven games played, 3.41 goals against average and 895 save percentage with a 4 2 record. So obviously, it's not just the goaltenders here because if every single goalie is failing, it's the team in front of him. And I mean, look at the team defensively. It's terrible. You have JT Miller, who you signed to a massive extension for giving him a lot of money to try to play that center role. Well, now he got bumped off to the wing because quite frankly, defensively, he has been horrific this season. On a wing position, which I mean, you're probably maximizing his potential, but I'd have to argue next season, Bo Horvat, I do not see coming back. I mean, if I'm Bo Horvat, why am I going to go back to an organization that just cannot win, that cannot produce a winner? And maybe you could argue that he's a part of the issue, but if I'm the Vancouver Canucks management, I'm just lighting the thing on fire and dumping all the unnecessary contracts to start anew. The guys you build around, you already have an Elias Pettersson and Thatcher Demko and Quinn Hughes. Those would be the standouts, but if I'm the Canucks, if you do not take a firm rebuild, you're going to be constantly stuck in this level in which they are where they're not a terrible team but they're not a good team either they're just mediocre and that's the death bell for any franchise because you're not good enough to go to the playoffs but you're not bad enough to get a significant draft pick to vastly improve your team so do i believe that bruce boudreaux should be fired as a vancouver canucks head coach listen he went on a really good run late last season when he got brought in i just don't think bruce boudreaux should be there for a rebuild I don't know if Rick Tockett's the answer either. If I'm management, just get rid of the useless contracts, get rid of some of the older players, embrace the rebuild. That is what you're going to have to do if you're going to be successful. I mean, to be very frank, when the Canucks got the Sedin twins, they weren't a great team. But having that great draft allowed them to have the building blocks to build a great foundation so they could be successful in later years. And the Canucks, while they didn't win a cup, were extremely good for a four to five year stretch. I think the Canucks organization needs to stop lying to themselves and just realize that this iteration of the team will never win anything and will never be a playoff contender. I'd be interested to know your thoughts down below. Do you think the Canucks need to just blow it up or do you think there needs to be more patience had? I'm Captain Paul for the locker room. We're trying to reach 1500 subscribers for the end of the month and I'll see you in the next video. To get them two points on the trip. Scores with the Forsberg, Elias Pettersson, angry goalie, but Pettersson